Good afternoon. I'm Officer James Dempsey with the Albuquerque Police Department Recruiting Unit. And this is my partner, Detective Michelle English. So we want to give a shout out to all of you in Michigan joining us this morning. In uh, northern Michigan, I know in Marquette, it's probably about a toasty 21 degrees outside. Thank you for taking your time out of your day to join us. Um, as well as you guys at Mott Community College, Kirkland Regional Police Academy, and Ferris State University. Thank you for joining us this morning. I also want to give a shout out to our APD CNM class. We have uh, generally academy at our academy in our building, and then one at uh, CNM, a local college. They graduated today, CNM class number four. They graduated today. Congratulations to them. I'd like to get started with some of the minimum requirements to be a cadet in our academy. You have to be 21 years of age by academy graduation. Um, you have to have a valid driver's license, uh, New Mexico license within 30 days of your hire date. Um, you must be a US citizen and you must have a high school diploma or GED. The minimum for a, a lateral applicant, a lateral applicant, if you do not know, is, is someone who is already a sworn officer. Uh, they already have, generally it's with another agency, like here would be uh, another agency, county. Um, so if you are already have experience or you're a sworn officer, you could be uh, accepted into our lateral academy. In order to do that, you must be, if you are in state, you must be currently certified um, within our state uh, to be an officer. If you are out of state officer, you must be currently certified and your certification must be recognized with our state Department of Public Safety. And how you do that, how you know if your um, certification is, uh, would be recognized here, you fill out a certification by waiver packet one. You'll find that on our website, apdonline.com. Just go to becoming a lateral officer, scroll down and you'll see a hyperlink called certification by waiver packet one. You'll download that, fill it out, complete it, send it to our state Department of Public Safety. Uh, on that piece of paper, you'll ex um, list all your training, experience, et cetera. And then after uh, the state reviews it, they will send you a letter back saying yes or no, that your certification would be recognized. And after you get that letter, then you can um, you could possibly be accepted into our lateral academy. Another uh, another bit of information about our lateral academy, it is uh, only about six to nine weeks and uh, you will serve one year of probation after your academy. Um, just so you know that. So for the salary as a cadet, you're gonna start out at 1935 an hour in the academy. Upon graduating the police academy, you're going to be a patrolman second class where you'll be making 21 27 an hour on your probationary period. And then one year after academy graduation, you will be at $29 an hour. And for the beginning salary for a lateral officer, we have two different um, programs. One is considered a no experience lateral. So if you graduate from a school or college and you have that certification that we that our state recognizes, um, but no experience, you would start out at $21.27 an hour. So just like uh, cadets that just graduate from our department, from our academy, you would start at the same level. So $21.27. And then uh, if you do have some experience, at least 24 years, 24 months of experience or more, then your starting uh, hourly pay would be $28 an hour. After you, after you graduate and you complete your probationary period, which is one year after you graduate, uh, you would bump up to $29 an hour. Some benefits we have at the city of Albuquerque as an officer, you would have medical, dental, and vision insurance. You would have vacation and sick leave accrual. We have holiday pay. I know it says 10 holidays annually. That was actually recently changed to 12 annually. 
And we also have a take home vehicle program. Um, I know where I came from in Michigan, it was something that was not very common at all. Um, as an officer here, you get a take home vehicle where you can use that vehicle to go to and from work and other areas relating to the job, which definitely saves you wear and tear on your own vehicle and is just a really good benefit. Uh, uh, some more benefits uh, to joining our department is the pre-hire contingent uh, option. What that means for you is, let's say you get through the hiring process and they say you're hired, but the next academy doesn't start for another four months. Uh, most people can't do without a job for that long period. So we do have a program, pre-hire program, and basically you're hired and you're put in an ad, admin position, basically. Uh, it could be different things, filing, typing, things like that. And then once the academy starts, you would, they would pull you out of that position and bring you into the, into the academy. So you'd start out at the, uh, the cadet pay, whatever it is, whether you start out as a cadet at 19, some an hour, or uh, no experience lateral, 21, 27 an hour. That's what you'd start at un until you uh, graduate. Also, uh, tuition reimbursement, we have that if you have um, desires to go to continue to educate your education, we do have a reimbursement plan um, and also educational leave. So if, if some of your classes are doing your, your um, work, uh, just get it approved through your chain of command and you will have up to three hours a week for that uh, educational program. Oh, the student loan, student loan forgiveness, tell them about that. So we also have a new program for student loan forgiveness for those of you that have your degree completed and you have loans that you need to get paid off. Uh, the city of Albuquerque is now partnered with a program that takes care of your student loan over a period of time. And there's some uh, different caveats that it's up to $25,000. You have had to uh, successfully pass your program, whether it's uh, associates or bachelor's, uh, master's. So there's a few caveats, but it's very, very popular now. Some of the additional opportunities uh, for joining our department is Additional pay, uh, if you work swing, you will make uh, $300 annually uh, because you're on swing. And if you work graveyard, graveyard it is $600 annually. Uh, bilingual pay, you can make uh, an additional $240 to $600 uh, if you're bilingual. The reason there's a range is because there's two different tests. There's a written test and an oral exam. So if you uh, only make one, then you'll get, of course, less pay, but if you uh, have both, if you pass both the oral and the written exam, then you would get the max, which is $600 annually. So we also have academic incentive pay for if you have your bachelor's degree, you get an additional $1,620 annually. If you have your master's degree, $1,920 annually, and even more if you have your PhD. Additionally, all City of Albuquerque employees participate in the Public Employees Retirement Association, which includes the opportunity to retire up with up to 90% of your top pay. And that's excellent too. That beats a lot of uh, programs out there that I'm aware of. Uh, also, let's go over the physical fitness requirements to uh, pass our PT test. The physical fitness that uh, you must pass, uh, we, you are tested on your push-up abilities. You have to do a, a push-up at least 15 within one minute or less. Uh, you have to do at least 27 sit-ups in one minute or less. You have to run a mile and a half within 15 minutes, 14 seconds or less, and a 300 meter sprint in 71 seconds or less. Now those are just minimums. That's minimum to get into the academy. There are exit, exit standards that you must pass to graduate. Um, we haven't had anyone fail those yet because uh, all the cadets are competitive, they push each other and we need to get you to those exit standards. But to just get in, you must meet those. And if you wanna see how to correctly perform those exercises, especially the uh, push-ups and the sit-ups, 
go to our website, again, apdonline.com, and there are some videos on how to uh, uh, perform those exercises. Also, uh, I've got to say our uh, social media, we have our own um, uh, Facebook and Instagram uh, that we would like you all to follow. We have our main Albuquerque Police Department Instagram and Facebook. We also have an Albuquerque Police Department recruiting unit. So the actual title for the Facebook is Albuquerque Police Recruiting Unit. And the Instagram is APD Recruiting Unit. So please follow us there. And we always put like videos and uh, information about uh, testing and our different units and benefits to joining our department. So please uh, join us there. And this afternoon, we'd like to introduce to you our guest speaker, Sergeant Josh Richards. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, so uh, if you would, there's a lot of people don't know about your unit. I know very little. At least we met a few days ago to discuss your unit. But if you could tell everybody else uh, about your unit, what you do, and, and a little bit about yourself. So my name is Sergeant Josh Richards. I've been with the Albuquerque Police Department since 2008. Uh, currently, I am assigned to the Gun Violence Reduction Unit under Investigative Services Division. Um, throughout my career, I've been fortunate to work a lot of different places. Um, started in field services, went to the tactical section canine unit, ran a police service dog for three years, promoted to sergeant in late 2008, um, excuse me, late 2016. I'm going to say, that's yeah, 2000, a, wow, yeah. you're, got, they got there you quick. Fast. Yes, you did. <laughs> um, so once I promoted to sergeant, went back to field services for about a year, um, then went to the tactical section SWAT team where I was the SWAT sergeant for two years. Mm -hmm. um, from there, I left to go into investigations. I did uh, Southwest Impact for about a year. And currently at GVRU for the last year, I've been running what is a fairly new team. Um, we specialize in long-term investigations targeting offenders of shootings. Um, violent offenders and my unit is also tasked with once the investigation is done and we have charges we then perform the apprehension um, what you're seeing in the video playing in the background is just one of our apprehensions on a shooter um, who was responsible for I believe three different shootings he is still currently being held in jail for trial we were able to get him remanded um, and it's just another uh, example of from start on the call out when the investigation happens to all the way through apprehension and the tactics we use with the modified felony stop you're gonna see um, to get the gentleman in the blue jacket into custody, um, to take him into custody safely and to make the city of Albuquerque safer. Nice, that's some, so obviously this is from our, uh, our, our helicopter. So you, you're in a uh, gun violence reduction unit. Obviously uh, you work with the, our air support. Uh, are there other units that you work with? Yeah, so one of the main things about my unit is you have to work in our department and out our department. So we work very close in hand with the other investigative service division units, um, investigative support unit, gang unit, um, intel unit, narcotics unit. Um, outside of that, we work closely with the investigative bureau violent crime section, so robbery, homicide. Um, and then outside the department, we work hand in hand with the federal partners, with the attorney generals or Attorney General's office, the uh, district attorney's office, um, crime strategic unit at the DA's office. So my guys are well versed um, in working with a lot of different units. Okay. How many people do you have underneath you? Currently, right now, I have seven detectives. Um, we have a spot that's open now, um, and there's going to be some some changes and different things coming. But that'll be a swing shift spot, so um, gives an opportunity for people to work a little different schedule. So as a sergeant, that's your unit. Um, what kind of um, officer are you looking to bring into your unit? What kind of experience do they need? I mean, can they go from graduation from the academy to your unit? Or what, do, what do you like your minimum requirements and what you're looking for? Yeah, great question. So again, like I said, we run a very high-end investigative unit. Um, we do a very specializing form of investigation. And then leading into the apprehension, which takes a lot of advanced tactics. It takes a lot of advanced training. Um, so what I would recommend anybody who's interested in my unit is one, be well versed in field service bureau, understand the backbone of the department, understand the backbone of the city and how we keep it safe. Um, from there, get some basic investigative experience. I'd recommend an impact team or some other unit along those lines where you could really learn basic investigations. 
uh, search warrants, digital warrants, cell phone warrants, arrest warrants, um, testifying in court, um, doing pretrial interviews, those type skill sets that come mostly through some training, but a lot through just practice. Um, advanced training stuff that I'd like to see when you're interested in my unit, rifle certified, uh, 40 millimeter certified. Um, if you could do some RBT training, not only with what the department requires, but maybe even some instructing so you understand the reality-based training and how that correlates to what we do in the field. Um, there's also the umbrella courses, which are being processed right now and hopefully will be approved soon through the academy. And that's seven basic investigation classes that I think everybody needs. Interview interrogation, warrant writing, digital warrant writing, um, just very basic classes that'll go a long ways. If you are interested in my unit, we have a two-year requirement um, with high recommendations, like I said, for investigative experience. And then you just got to put in for our testing and go through the testing process. So you said a two-year requirement. So someone has to stay in that unit for two years. And why, why, why is that? No, no, no. A two-year requirement to test two-year non-probationary. Oh. So technically, at three years on, you could test for my unit based on what the department is. What I have seen in running the unit for the last year, though, mm -hmm. is the people who come and test that soon out the gate, they really struggle with the writing assignment and the testing, and they really struggle with the oral board. Um, it's not that they're not hungry. It's not that they're not go-getters, and it's not that they're not qualified, good officers. It's just that it takes a special skill set to work in my unit. So I've, I have some detective experience. I don't know very much about yours. So I know with other units that I've gone TDY with, which is like temporary duty, as you know, um, do you allow that in your unit so people can really see if is that unit for them? Great question. Again, I highly recommend doing a temporary duty assignment. The reason for it is my unit is on call 24-7, 365. We work four tens Tuesday through Friday. 07 a.m. to 1700 in the afternoon. Um, we are on call, like I said, 24 7 for call outs. Um, it is an extremely high op tempo this year to date, which we haven't completed the year. We're over 220 shooting investigations spread load through seven detectives. Um, so when you come to my unit, you're going to work a lot of hours. You're going to work a very high pace. You're going to be expected to leave uh, special occasions on time when you're on call. So yes, a TUI is a great way to come in and see if this is a unit for you and your family because the dedication it takes to work in this unit. Okay. Well, it sounds interesting. Um, so I know you have a lot of experience. You've been on several years. Uh, you've been a sergeant, an officer, and, and specialized units. What is your favorite position that you've had so far and, and why? Um, been lucky to do this as a patrolman and now as a supervisor. I have uh, two separate situations that really come to mind. As a patrolman, my favorite spot, hands down, was K9. Um, it was always on the go. It was a ton of hours. It was constant training and tactics in the dog. And then all of the deployments we did with the K9 unit back then, um, which I would assume it still is today or maybe more, there was over 800 K9 deployments a year. They were averaging about 100 SWAT callouts a year. Um, it was just Go, 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 go. The op tempo was amazing. Uh, learned a lot, learned through a fire hose, was at times overwhelmed, but great leaders, great people around me to mentor me. Just just a blast. Something that if you're a hard worker, you're a go-getter and you want to push yourself, I would highly recommend looking into the tactical section in K9. Um, but now as a supervisor, you know, one of the most fun times I've had was whether as the SWAT sergeant or now as the gun violence reduction unit sergeant just watching these hungry, go-getting, hardworking detectives and tacticians go out and perform their skill set at an extremely high level is just rewarding beyond compare. Excellent. So uh, you've told us you know, what you've enjoyed. Where do you see yourself in, I don't know, three years? I mean, you've done so much already. Where do you see yourself in three years? Yeah. Um, I think about this a lot. I think it's something that as, as professionals, we, we need to constantly be thinking about where's our growth, where are we going next? Um, currently, right now, um, there's some things I want to get accomplished at Gun Violence Reduction Unit, some policy stuff, some more detectives, a second team, some things that I want to get taken care of. But in three years, I, I, I strongly see myself taking the lieutenant's test and becoming a lieutenant and taking on that challenge of that next added level of leadership and being able to guide, mentor, and hold accountable um, great officers and help them 
fulfill their career goals and what makes them excited about the job they do because um, the best part about APD is we're a big department. We have a lot of different units. And with that, we have a lot of different avenues we can go. And so to be in that position to help mentor and guide, that's going to be fun. Nice. Um, so as you know, I'm in recruiting and we get all these questions uh, about you know the academy and uh, what it's like. For someone who's, who's contemplating joining our department, coming into our academy, what advice uh, would you give someone uh, thinking about joining us? You know, I think the advice I would give is have an open mind, a positive attitude. The academy for me was a stark contrast from where I came from. I'm a, I'm a military veteran. I had joined the academy in early 2008, and I had just gotten home from a deployment to Iraq. And I came into the academy with a very strong warrior mindset. And what I learned in the academy was transitioning that to the guardian mindset and really looking at every situation individually, not comparing it to previous ones, taking it based on its merits and trying to really help people and protect people and make this city a safe place. Because as like I've, we've spoken offline before, um, and I tell all my officers this, it's not just the citizens and the people of Albuquerque, but it's our families too. It's our kids, it's our parents, it's our aunts, uncles, cousins. So um, like for me, who's a native New Mexican born and raised here, you know, I have a lot of family history here. So that's what I'm trying to make it better for in the academy. I think we do an amazing job of preparing people to fulfill that goal, that mission. I agree. Um, see, um, so you graduated several years ago. Um, was there, um, uh, are you still friends with those people? I mean, I know for me, it was, you know, it was different. I didn't have that military, but it was like a family and I still have fond memories. It was, you know, almost 16 years ago and, and I still have fond memories. Uh, is, anything come up like that for you? Yeah, you know, it's actually great. It's been, uh, March will be 13 years, we start in the 14th year. And I still talk to a lot of my classmates when we get together, when we run across those paths, we, we catch up, talk about things. I'm very fortunate right now, I'm working side by side with one of my classmates, uh, acting Lieutenant Jeff Bernard. Um, so it, 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 it's lifelong relationships that you build um, because it's a camaraderie and it's something you go through that's unique to your class and to your friends and your peer group. And um, I would like to equate it more to less of a friendship and more of a family environment. You're gonna fight, but you're also gonna come together. You're gonna accomplish things that you can't accomplish alone. You're gonna accomplish them as a team. And it's going to be those memories that when you run into each other 10 years down the road, you're going to tell jokes and have a laugh and a smile and go, man, I can't believe we were so mad about that. But look how we got through it. It was great. Yeah, fun memories, fun memories. So um, thank you very much. Let's uh, take some questions from our audience. Um, let's see what we got coming up. Let's just look at some of those. Let's see. How about, okay, how about, let's see. What's the big difference between a, uh, you said you were trying to test for a lieutenant. Uh, what is the big difference between a sergeant and lieutenant? What's, what's that? Um, you know, I think that for me, this is all speculation. I've never been a lieutenant. I've done some acting lieutenant work. But lieutenant, you're in that mid-management level. Your job now is to oversee whether it's a watch or a section. Um, and your job is to really, you know, guide, mentor, and lead troops who are going out into the city every day to make it safer. And so with that in mind, you know, right now as a sergeant, I'm in charge of seven detectives with one single mission, one single mindset. Mm -hmm. Whereas as a lieutenant, I'll be in charge of a section with many detectives or many officers with many different goals, different missions, different things they're trying to accomplish based on the direction uh, from the chain, from the top down. And so having that opportunity, I think is going to be great to not only learn and grow as, as an officer myself, but also to help get men and women in law enforcement to their next step in their career to what they want to do. And again, I think it goes a long way in our leadership is that you have to prepare the person behind you to take your spot. Okay. It's intense. I know you'll be great. I, I know you'll be great at it. So good luck with that. Uh, so one of the questions is, uh, what if uh, I smoked weed once legally within a year? Will that disqualify me? Uh, so that's uh, would be a question for me. Uh, it is a two year from last date of use. So if you go, then you got another year to wait. 
but it's okay. It'll fly by. Uh, you can work on your um, other testing skills, uh, your PT, your written, etc. Let's see. Let's see, here's a question for you. You you said uh, forty millimeter earlier that your your group uses forty millimeter. Forty millimeter. What is that? I know what it is, but you would explain to the other. So the 40 millimeter uh, platform is a less lethal platform. Mm -hmm. um, it shoots a 40 millimeter uh, soft foam head projectile, and it's designed as a less than lethal munition to help stop somebody's um, active resistance against a lawful order. Um, it's a great tool. It's a very safe tool. It allows for a greater range of uses from distance to closer than say like a beanbag less lethal munition. Um, and it's, it has its own set of uh, requirements. There's a class you go through, there's a test you take, and then you have to do your yearly certification along with your firearms. Okay, hope that answers your question. Uh, let's see, what type of test do we have to do to get into the academy? That, that's one for me, I'll take this. Um, there are several tests you have to do to be hired. Uh, we already went over the PT test, the four, uh, physical requirement um, ability test. You have to take a psych exam, medical exam, drug testing. Um, what's some others? Oh, uh, you have to take a written psych. Uh, and there are two. Uh, the entry tests are uh, written, uh, reading comprehension vocabulary. That's the Nelson Denny and our city entrance exam. Uh, it has to do with basic math, map reading, it's generally at about a little above a 10th grade level exam. It's not extremely hard. If you would like some examples of the, the questions you'll see, just go to our website, apdonline.com, and there, uh, there's a hyperlink for some uh, practice exams on both the city entrance and the Nelson Denny. Um, my suggestion for Nelson Denny is just to read a book that's a little bit challenging for you. Anytime you see a, uh, a word, uh, or you hear a word that you don't quite understand, just look it up on your phone. Go to uh, the dictionary and look it up and see what that means. Um, and you'll do a lot better. Let's see. Uh, oh, a PSA. What is a PSA? A police service aid? Uh, police service aid, sorry, that's again for me. Um, it is a generally a position that is held for someone who doesn't meet the requirements to be a police officer. Um, Generally, they're between 18 and 21 years old. Um, oh, you also don't have to be a U.S. citizen to uh, become a PS, a public uh, police service aide. Uh, the same written test and the same physical standards. Um, so that's that. And if you want to go to our website, aponline.com, and uh, you can see all the minimum requirements. If you are between 18 and, and under 21, then the uh, marijuana usage is only six months. So uh, for some of you who just graduated from high school and only have six months or, or uh, under two years with the last use of marijuana, you can, you'd probably be eligible for that one. See, the question is height weight requirements. There is not uh, a, a height weight requirement. Uh, I think our shortest female is She's definitely sub five foot, she's probably by four, four, nine, four, ten. So I'm sorry that there, I mean, it's, it's a good thing. There's no minimum uh, height or weight requirement. Let's see, I, uh, another question is, I am applying for APD and also for BCSO. Is there any issues uh, with applying for both departments and potentially disqualifying applicants? No, um, I understand you want to cast a wide net, you know, you want a job in law enforcement. Um, so yeah, go ahead. Uh, just, just be honest with, with everyone and let us know that you're applying with both BCSO and us and not a problem. You wanna take the next one? Yes, so uh, another question coming in, it, it asks, is there a polygraph? And yes, there is. After you complete your personal history statement. You'll meet with the background detective. You'll go over that statement in detail, and then you will be taking a poly polygraph that's based upon the answers of that question. 
Um, I just want to follow up with that, uh, the polygraph. Uh, it, to me, it should be the easiest test you ever take because all you have to do to pass that test is to tell the truth. That's it. Uh, so it should be the easiest one. Easiest one. So uh, another question we have coming in from Earl Nieto. Uh, he's asking, after the Nelson Denny psych and polygraph, how long until I hear back from APD? So we can't give you a definite answer on that because it depends on the background unit. So I know they're very busy processing files right now. So it could be a month, it could be a few months. We, we can't give a definite answer, but if you pass those successfully, you will hear back from a background investigator. And uh, just uh, piggyback on that, if you, uh, after a couple of weeks, if you don't hear back from a, a background detective, you can always contact recruiting and we can find out who your background detective is. Uh, so uh, just contact us and we can find out, help find out for you. Uh, it may be, uh, go a little slow right after you take your test, but that's why I encourage everyone to test as soon as they meet the min requirements. Uh, even if you know, you're not the fastest that you wanna be or you wanna lose a little more weight or do a little more push-ups, as long as you meet the min requirements, just go ahead and test because it could be you know, several months before you're in the academy. So let us start doing our job, i.e. the backgrounds, investigation and the other tests, the polygraph, et cetera, while you work on yourself. Um, so please test as soon as you can. So uh, another question we have coming in from Madison Daniels is after you become a PSA, is there an opportunity to move up to be a police officer? And to answer that, there are kind of two different paths, but being a PSA will definitely assist when you become an officer. So initially you're gonna apply as a PSA, you're gonna test as a PSA, and that will be your job. Um, however, after you do that for say a few years, if you start that when you're 18, 19, and then 20 comes around, you're looking at applying as an officer, you could do that. You're gonna have to go through the Police Cadet Academy to become an officer as well, but you will be learning a lot of skills as a PSA that will help you as an officer. Um, you're going to be taking a number of crash reports as well as property crimes. And when doing that, you're learning how to navigate. You're learning how to use our computer system as well as the different systems we use for reporting. I was a field training officer for four years prior to coming in recruiting. And I could tell you a number of applicants that I've had that were PSAs first had a smoother transition to becoming an officer. You're also getting that experience talking on the radio and just the number of functions you'll do as an officer, you will learn those as a PSA. And another great benefit too, I mean, when you start as a PSA, that starts your retirement as well. So you'll be retiring at an earlier age as well. Uh, a question is how long does it take to typically get hired? Uh, can't really answer that one, but I will tell you the thing that slows most people's uh, background in getting hired is themselves because they are missing documents, they're missing their birth certificate, they're missing uh, transcripts, etc. So how you can minimize the, minim the amount of time that it takes to get hired is have all your paperwork in, have it right. You know, if we ask for an original, give us the original. We want uh, you know, a copy notarized, make sure you give us all the documents you know, that we've requested in the format that we have requested. Um, also, make sure you answer your phone because once background detectives are contacting people to schedule them for a polygraph, if you don't answer your phone, they're gonna leave you a message but then go right down to the next file and try and get fill that spot in. So. Make sure you're in close contact with your background detective so you can uh, get that next opening for uh, that, uh, that spot, you know, at polygraph or medical. Make sure you answer your phone and you stay in close contact. So uh, another question is, can PSAs arrest people? And the answer to that is no, they are not sworn law enforcement and they do not have the ability to make arrests.
Uh, what are some examples of immediate disqualifying factors? Uh, you'll have a list on our website, apdonline.com, but some things that pop out to me is, of course, felony. Uh, felons generally can't carry guns, uh, and you have to carry a gun as a police officer. So um, if you're convicted of a felony, uh, domestic violence, domestic violence uh, multiple DWIs, et cetera. So there's, there's several, uh, but I will tell you that the main thing uh, that gets people removed from the hiring process is uh, is lying. You're not honest. You're minimizing. Um, we all make mistakes, and that's okay. I mean, we're not looking for perfection uh, because there is not a perfect person out there. I know I've made uh, mistakes as a youth, so uh, you just have to be honest and say, you know what, I, I made this mistake, and this is what happened, and and just own up. So. Just tell the truth, that's another thing I can say. Uh, another question we have coming in, are you offering assistance with moving to New Mexico from another state? So we don't have a relocation stipend at this time, but what we do have for a police cadet is we have a $5,000 hiring bonus, which is incremental throughout your first year. Um, and along with that, too, for out-of-state applicants, we try the best that we can to streamline the process so you'll only have to come out two times to complete the testing prior to getting hired. I will piggyback on that. So if you are coming in from out-of-state, make sure that you contact the recruiting unit so we can try and get you uh, scheduled in for multiple um, tests. Like Everyone will take the um, city entrance, Nelson Denny, and the written psych. Uh, so if you if you will make your visit just you know a little bit longer, we will try and get you in for like the polygraph or get you in for an interview with one of the background detectives. So just stay in close contact with us until you move over to backgrounds. Looks like here's so, go ahead. Another question coming in, how does the public health order come into play with testing? Well, because of COVID restrictions, a uh, number of applicants that we have have been limited. Um, typically, it's a larger group that we have. Right now, we're running a much smaller group when they're coming in for testing. Obviously, when you come into the academy, you're going to be wearing your mask the entire time. They're going to be taking your temperature and just making sure COVID safe protocols are followed. Uh, another question is, can I use my GI Bill while in the academy? Yes, you can. I don't have any military. And I know, James, you don't. Um, but we do have a recruiter that is in the military now. Uh, it's uh, Detective Tim Wolfbrandt. Uh, if you do use your GI Bill in the academy, it's considered... Uh, higher education. So you you can use that. Um, I would direct more questions to um, our partner, Detective uh, Tim Wolfbrandt. Um, he can help you with that because he is in the military now and he he's more versed in that, that information. So uh, another question we have coming in, is this a good job for if you have a family? I think it is absolutely. I mean, depending on the unit that you're going to be in, it's going to have different requirements um, for the amount of time you're going to be away from your family. But overall, I think both the Albuquerque Police Department and City of Albuquerque is a very family friendly environment. Uh, have you been in the horse unit? I have not. Have you, James? No. Sergeant, have you? No, ma'am. Uh, I know it's the coolest, I think it's the coolest unit on our department. I've been around them because I'm also in the honor guard unit. So I've worked closely with them. Uh, and one of our background detectives is also in the horse mounted unit as a collateral. So basically uh, collateral means if you, it, you're just there to help out. So I know uh, the detective I'm talking about is, is full-time background detective but also on special events like uh, balloon fiesta or parades or some other events that he will uh, 
go to the horse mounted unit and help them out. He has a, um, a horse there. He does training with them uh, every Wednesday, I think it is. Uh, so even if you're not, even if you're interested in the horse mounted unit and there's not an opening, you could be uh, potentially a collateral officer in that unit. So that just means you're there when they need you, kind of like an on-call sort of thing. But no, I, I've never been in that unit, but it is it's a cool unit. So here's another question. So the polygraph test is only based on the personal history statement question. Um, it, it mostly is, but other things could come up. Uh, if your background detective uh, finds out some things that uh, you did not list on there or something uh, comes outside their investigation that's not on the personal history statement, of course it could, it could entail anything. Uh, but the vast majority of it uh, is from the personal history statement. The main thing I can again tell you is, is plea with you is to tell the truth. Be completely upfront about your background. Again, we are not looking for, for, for perfection. Um, we hire humans every day. So uh, please just admit what you did and you'll be fine. Well, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. Ah. That time really flew by. We appreciate your time. I know some of you may have more questions and we would encourage you to send us an email at apdrecruiting at cabq.gov or you could give us a call at 505-343-5040 and we would be happy to answer those questions. And please don't forget to follow us on uh, Instagram and Facebook, the recruiting unit. Thank you. Thank you.